Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the more exciting discoveries coming from our neighbor, Venus, the closest planet to us. And this is sort of what it looks like if you were to remove the atmosphere from the surface. But because its atmosphere is so thick and so reflective, if you were to just hover above it right now, you would probably see something like this. But in the last few months, we've had some really incredible discoveries about this planet, with the most recent most exciting discovery being made just a few days ago. And let's actually start with that one first. The discovery, or the official confirmation, that the surface of Venus is definitely volcanically active, with the scientists recently discovering signs of definitive volcanic eruptions that might have happened in the last 30 years. And specifically in the region you see right here, the location known as the Alta Regio. If we were to zoom in, it would sort of look like this. And what's interesting about this particular location is that it contains what's known as Tessera. Very unusual formations that seem to represent some kind of a deformed shape, with these unusual strikes in multiple directions, but extremely close to one another. And like other Tessera on Venus, this one is also slightly elevated, approximately 2 kilometers above the surface. And in this case, it might have been created by some kind of a contractional folding, where the ground starts to fold on itself, as a result of some kind of a geological activity. But in this case, very often these also contain a lot of volcanic plains surrounding these unusual features. There are quite a lot of these unusual formations on the surface of Venus, but their origin is still not entirely understood. However, relatively recently, when the scientists were trying to re-examine some of the older images collected by the Magellan probe, specifically around these two massive volcanoes, Oza Mons and Mat Mons that you see right here, Something unusual was discovered by examining the images from February of 91, followed by the images from October of 91. At least one of the volcanic vents, very close to the Mad Mons, has definitely expanded with unusual bright features present in the images from October, but absent few months prior. And the best possible explanation here was that this was a result of some kind of a massive volcanic flow, a flow somehow connected to that previously believed to be dormant volcano that might be not so dormant after all. Here's another image showing a little bit more detail. And when in this case it was compared to computer models, the most likely scenario for the formation of this unusual 2.2 square kilometer shape was basically a sudden volcanic eruption. Something that surprisingly, or luckily, happened around the same time as the Magellan mission. And that of course implies that these volcanoes are very likely a lot more common and very likely are happening right now as well. It is quite unlikely that this only happened during this particular time. And all of these findings were now reported in the paper that you can find in the description below. And this of course is a really important confirmation for what a lot of scientists have been saying for a pretty long time. Venus is volcanically active after all, unlike previous assumptions and unlike previous investigations. And though obviously the surface of Venus is covered in signs of these previous volcanoes from possibly billions or millions of years ago, the confirmation that it even happens now unfortunately creates more mysteries than potential explanations, mostly because it's still kind of unknown how Venus is able to do so and what exactly drives the volcanism on the planet. Although not so long ago, a few weeks ago, some of the scientists proposed a potentially relatively cheap and somewhat intriguing mission that we can actually use to try to explore this and to try to learn more about Venusian geology. It would involve a dozen or maybe even hundreds of different balloons flying around in the upper atmosphere of Venus in order to try to measure tiny variations in air pressure using what's known as infrasound microbarometers. Tiny pressure detectors responsible for measuring variations in pressure produced by these various volcanic eruptions, which could then essentially allow us to see through the atmosphere, or I guess hear through the atmosphere, and thus localize some of these volcanic eruptions in real time. Although at the moment this is still in early planning stages and would not be possible for at least another decade. As a matter of fact, the next planned mission to Venus, the NASA's Veritas mission, has unfortunately been postponed for a few years due to the staffing shortages that I've discussed in one of the videos in the description. And so this mission might start in 2031, and depending on discoveries here, more missions might follow in mid-2030s. And so unfortunately, it's unlikely we're going to collect more data about Venus until 2030s. Unless, of course, there's some kind of an unexpected private mission that decides to launch here faster. But we don't really know what's going to happen just yet. Either way, you can learn more about these Venus balloons in the study in the description below. But I guess let's go back to that previous mystery. So how exactly do those volcanoes work here? What sort of a geological activity is happening here in order to form all of this? Well, despite a relatively similar size and mass between Venus and Earth, these two planets are very different. Earth, as you know, has plate tectonics, geological activity responsible for driving volcanism. 
and the geological activity responsible for most of the heat loss on Earth. The same does not seem to exist on Venus. But Venus still has to lose some of its heat somehow. And so recent models establish that it probably has very different lithosphere and very different crust compared to planet Earth. Its lithosphere is able to conduct heat much easier, very likely because it's structured very differently on the inside. Which as a result produces all of these features we don't have on our own planet, but according to the scientists, might have existed on Earth 4 to possibly 2.5 billion years ago, before plate tectonics existed on Earth, and when the Earth's lithosphere was also a lot more conductive as well. In other words, in some sense, modern Venus seems to resemble ancient Earth. But one question that was always sort of important is, how much? How much do these two planets resemble? For example, has it ever had any kind of liquid water on its surface? And if so, what exactly happened to it? Well, another recent study discovered a very interesting way to try to answer this question. And the scientists behind this paper were able to answer some of these questions by using various measurements of oxygen in the atmosphere of Venus. And according to their study and their modeling, there is just not enough oxygen in the atmosphere of modern Venus to explain a large ocean in the past. Or to rephrase this, if Venus ever had a large ocean, we would probably still be seeing signs of this water somewhere in the atmosphere. Water is oxygen and hydrogen, and due to various effects from the sun, it would then turn into oxygen and hydrogen, with hydrogen possibly escaping into outer space, but oxygen very likely remaining somewhere in the atmosphere and possibly still detectable today. But modern calculations detected almost no oxygen in the atmosphere. And so to try to explain this, they created something like 94,000 different models, with only some of them matching what we're observing. If there were oceans here, they were very likely extremely small, no deeper than 300 meters or 900 feet. And any oxygen that remained here might have become some kind of a rock on the surface, or possibly turned into carbon dioxide. But unfortunately this was only seen in about 0.4% of all of the models, meaning that the majority suggested that there might have actually been no water. And even if there was water, it all disappeared more than 3 billion years ago. And in some sense this implies that, fundamentally, Venus is just a very different terrestrial planet, not Earth-like at all, and possessing its own properties that our planet does not have. With all these unusual properties of Venus then resulting in the extreme atmosphere that it has, and it's this atmosphere that then changed the planet in other ways. One of the major effects this has on the planet is of course its rotation. As you might already know, Venus appears to spin in the opposite direction. And that's mostly because its rotation is just extremely slow, much slower than a single year. All this is a result of very thick atmosphere. The atmosphere slowed down the planetary spin over time. But exactly how it did so is still not really understood. But the recent observations of Venusian atmosphere kind of take us just a little bit closer to possibly getting it. It involves what the scientists refer to as Venus cloud discontinuity, although more unofficially referred to as the atmospheric tsunami, because it's literally an enormous atmospheric wave, a relatively thick wave, that's something like 70 kilometers in height. And it's essentially a giant atmospheric wave, much larger than anything on planet Earth, that seems to go around Venus and, as scientists believe, seems to play an important role in helping Venusian atmosphere to accelerate and to move much faster, which then affects the rotation of the planet. And the main reason the scientists are trying to understand what's going on here is because the Venusian winds, unlike winds on Earth, seem to move much much faster than the rotation of the planet, in this case at least 60 times faster, at least in the upper atmosphere of Venus. But why exactly they move so fast was never really truly understood. But this unusual phenomenon known as superrotation over billions and billions of years is very likely the reason why Venus stops spinning as fast, eventually assuming the current rate 243 days per spin. And all of this seems to connect to this unusual discontinuity or this unusual tsunami wave in the atmosphere of the planet. And so by examining the ultraviolet observations from the Japanese Akatsuki mission that took these pictures back in 2022, the scientists were able to see that this discontinuity seems to dramatically change in altitudes and thus change in speed depending on the time of the year, with this unusual tsunami wave only existing at certain altitudes and generally disappearing above 70 kilometers in height. But it's the overall motion of this wave that seems to provide velocity to the winds above it, causing the atmosphere to move much faster than the atmosphere below. Although because this particular phenomenon was only discovered in 2016, it's still very poorly understood even today. Nevertheless, you can learn more about this in the paper in the description below. And last but not least, we have this. 
a new intriguing project currently analyzed by NASA to create batteries that might be able to operate on Venus for days, weeks or even months at a time. Batteries that would be able to withstand super high temperatures, super high pressures, and thus, if successful, could also be used here on planet Earth for some of the more extreme environments. And in this case, the current prototype was able to operate for approximately 120 days in conditions extremely similar to what we find on Venusian surface, with the tests conducted at 465 degrees Celsius, generating almost constant voltage for approximately 118 days. Now, these are still lithium alloy batteries containing various metal sulfides and a few other components, but the actual internal design allows them to function at very high temperatures. Unfortunately, there was no detail on how exactly this works, probably because of a patent issue, but the tests so far are very promising. And because at the moment there's really almost no other way to generate energy on the surface here, this is actually a really exciting announcement. It means that future Venusian missions finally have a solution to the energy problem. They might be able to operate for at least 118 days. And unfortunately, other techniques of generating energy on Venus would just not work. You cannot use solar power here, it's just a little bit too thick in terms of the atmosphere, and an RTG that uses nuclear power would not work either in these super hot conditions. But on Venus, by using the heat, it becomes possible to turn certain electrolytes that are usually solid and inert in Earth conditions to make them conduct electricity much easier and to turn them into very effective super hot electrolytes. Something that NASA wants to use for their mission known as Lone Lift In-Situ Solar System Explorer. Interestingly, the early concepts were trying to use wind power, but that turned out to be not very effective. And so using some kind of a battery-powered mission is most likely going to be the only way. But this mission is not launching anytime soon either. But looks like the major problem has been solved. We now have a way to provide energy. And that was of course the biggest problem before. Pretty much all of the previous missions by the Soviet Union, for example, all failed because things here are just a little bit too hot. The batteries don't last very long, the sensors melt pretty quickly as well, and so the use of more extreme materials or materials that only function in hot conditions is basically mandatory for making this work. But we'll be talking more about this mission and of course some of the other discoveries in some of the future videos as well. On that note, check out some of the previous discoveries about this wonderful planet in the description below, where you can also find a lot of other links in regards to all of these discoveries. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.